Good evening. My name is Odette Kent, and I am the president of the League of Women Voters in Wilmington. It's an honor for the League to bring you this program this evening, and we are grateful to WCTV for co-sponsoring this event and for letting us help them showcase their beautiful new studio space. When I tell people that I belong to the League of Women Voters, I find that most people have heard of the League, but don't really know what we do or what we stand for. The League of Women Voters was formed in 1920 and is a true grassroots organization that works at the local, state, and national levels. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages informed and active participation of citizens in government. We work to increase understanding of major public policy issues and influence that public policy through education and advocacy. We have leagues in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Hong Kong, and in addition to hundreds of local leagues nationwide, including right here in Wilmington. In Massachusetts, the League has researched major public policy issues and informed candidates, elected officials, the media, and the general public of our positions. In recent years, our policy priorities have included casino gambling, health care reform, voting rights, transparency in government, affordable housing, and safer alternatives to toxic chemicals. The Wilmington League is best known for hosting Candidates Night an annual event that gives voters a chance to learn the difference between the candidates running for local office. This year's forum will be a little different, and we hope you'll find it interesting. And more importantly, we hope it will encourage you to become more involved. Now there's some good news and bad news in 2009 when it comes to civic participation in Wilmington. The bad news first. Wilmington will get to vote for two new members of school committee and one new member of the Board of Selectmen on Saturday, April 25th. These are critical positions, and despite how important these positions are, we only have three candidates for three openings. In addition, there's one candidate for town moderator, one candidate for regional vocational school committee. Both are incumbent, and both are running unopposed. That means everyone who is running has already won. Now that's good news for them, but it's not necessarily good news for our local democracy because it implies a lack of interest, which may lead to less accountabilities to you, the voters. To be honest, when we learned that there would be no contested races this year, we considered canceling candidates night like we did last year in 2008. But then we realized that this was the very reason we needed to hold this forum. Our job is to educate the public, about the candidates and what their positions what their positions are responsible for. The good news is that at least we have three new people running and two willing to continue to serve. And we want to show our respect and appreciation for their willingness to serve by giving them the full attention that they deserve. Many people say that serving in public office is a thankless job. I imagine that that feels true at times. So tonight, join me in thanking those who have stepped up to serve the town of Wilmington. Mike Shampoo, candidate for a three-year term on the Board of Selectmen, Anthony Quincy Vale, and Mario Marchese, candidates for two three-year terms on the school committee, Jim Stewart, candidate for a three-year term as town moderator, and Jim Gillis, candidate for a three-year term on the Regional Vocational School Committee. Unfortunately, Jim Gillis was not able to be with us this evening. We would also like to thank all of the elected officials that give their time to serve Wilmington, some of whom are here tonight. Peggy Kane, chairperson for the school committee, and Mike Newhouse, chairman of the board of selectmen. We're going to do things a little differently tonight and take some time to learn more about our local government, how it works, and the priorities for the next 18 months or so. Then we'll hear from the candidates, engage them in a friendly question and answer session that will include questions from Wilmington High School senior, senior Nira Pandia, the local press, and the league. If time allows, we will entertain questions from our studio audience. Last but not least, we will close our program with a glimpse into the future of Wilmington. We will meet Michaela Finn, a sixth grader from the middle school who was recently awarded second place in a statewide essay contest sponsored by the League of Women Voters. 
This is the first time we've actively included Wilmington youth in our league events, and it will not be the last because Michaela and Nira are living proof that democracy is not a spectator sport. It's now my pleasure to introduce town moderator, Jim Stewart, who will moderate the next segment of this program. Thank you, Odette, and thank you to the League of Women Voters and WCTV for hosting the event this evening. I'll be responsible for moderating three sections of this evening's event. The first one you will hear from uh, existing members of the school committee, the Shawshank Tech School Committee, the Wilmington Board of Selectmen, and myself, the town moderator, on our roles and responsibilities on those various boards and the three primary challenges that face us over the next 18 months. The second section, you'll meet the candidates that are running that Odette just introduced to you for the school committee and the Board of Selectmen. They'll tell us a little bit about themselves in two-minute introductory statements. In the third section will be some questions from the press and from uh, one of our high school seniors uh, to those candidates. That section will last approximately 24 minutes. So uh, first uh, is the section that you'll hear from various boards, and I get the honor of uh, opening that piece, tell you a little bit about what the responsibilities of the top moderator are. I have three primary responsibilities, and first of all, thank you for electing me to my first six terms as your moderator, and although I run unopposed, I would appreciate your vote once again this year. Uh, I have three primary responsibilities. The first is, along with the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen and the Chairman of the Finance Committee, the three of us are responsible for appointing the Finance Committee. My second responsibility is appointing the Memorial Day Parade Committee. And my third responsibility, a very unknown fact there, uh, and my third responsibility is uh, running the annual town meeting and any special town meetings that the selectmen or the voters of the town of Wilmington may call. My real responsibility is to run those meetings in a fair and consistent and impartial basis. And um, to run them in accordance with town bylaws, state statutes, and Robert's rules of order and to give the voters of the town of Wilmington an opportunity to discuss and vote on all of those articles in a fair and consistent manner. Annual town meeting this year is uh, May 2nd, starts at 10.30, or when we get uh, 150 voters to, to meet the uh, quorum, and I'd encourage uh, all the voters to come out and join us at the annual town meeting at the high school gymnasium. We have 42 uh, articles this year ranging from uh, the town budget operating budget to a number of capital expenditure articles to some rezonings uh, along with a couple of uh, 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 sale of town owned land articles and some uh, articles sponsored by various boards and committees in the town of Wilmington so I'd encourage everyone to come out and participate in what I consider to be the most democratic process in the world and that's uh, a New England old-fashioned town meeting Second, to tell us a little bit about their roles and responsibilities uh, will be Peggy Kane from the Wilmington School Committee. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, before I start, just thank the League of Women Voters. I think that to use this as an educational forum in um, the case of an uncontested election is a great idea, and um, I'm really looking forward to the rest of this evening. The school committee is the publicly elected equivalent of a board of directors of a corporation, which in this case is a school system. In addition, the school committee is the legal agent of the state and therefore must fulfill both state and federal mandates. At the same time, the board must be responsive to the community. The board is a legislative body that develops, evaluates, and oversees education policies. The superintendent serves as the school committee's chief executive officer and educational advisor. The effective school committee solicits information and recommendations from the superintendent before establishing policy. After reviewing and discussing this information, it is the school committee's duty to make the best decision possible based on the information available. Over the next 18 months, your school committee and superintendent will be in year four of a five-year strategic plan. That plan centers on student learning results based on methods of instruction and assessment data used to inform instruction appropriate professional development opportunities for all staff, ensuring that all facilities support our educational needs, 
building strong community relationships, and ensuring that technology is an integral part of the support for student learning. In addition, we will be completing another year of our curriculum renewal cycle that ensures up-to-date materials for each of our content area curriculums. And finally, we will be investigating through a state process the need for a new Wilmington High School. So good luck to all the candidates and thank you for having me tonight. Our next speaker will be representing the uh, Wilmington Board of Selectmen, Mr. Mike Newhouse. Good evening. Uh, before I begin, I also would like to thank uh, the League and, <coughs> excuse me, WCTV, <coughs> pardon me, members of the press of Wilmington High School and uh, the League of Women Voters and uh, uh, especially the candidates for the willingness to step up and to participate. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the Board of Selectmen is, uh, uh, much like Peggy had described, the school committee is uh, kind of like a board of uh, directors for the town of Wilmington. Uh, we uh, are responsible for a variety of things that are uh, governed by state law, local law, and in some cases federal law. We're responsible for such things as calling uh, annual and special town meetings, uh, defending and prosecuting lawsuits on behalf of the town, and issuing a myriad of uh, licenses such as victual licenses and uh, car sales licenses and the like. Uh, we also are responsible for appointing uh, several important positions in the town of Wilmington. Uh, that includes the ability to appoint and to remove uh, the town manager, town council, town accountant, and board of appeals. Uh, one of the things that the selectmen are also responsible for doing is to guide public policy and to guide the budget process uh, as the town manager puts together a budget to present to the finance committee and ultimately to town meeting. As far as our priorities for the next uh, year and a half to two years, I'd first say that there are a number of things that uh, have been priorities for several years and will continue to be priorities. Uh, those things include discussions about a new high school, uh, capping and redeveloping the Maple Meadow landfill, uh, making the MWRA connection to bring an ample supply of potable water to the town, and uh, rehabbing our Browns, field well, uh, Browns Crossing well fields. Uh, in the next year especially, though, we need to do three things. A, we need to weather the storm, and that is not something that's been particularly easy to do the last several years, but so far we've managed to do it uh, without, um, without any pink slips, uh, as some of our neighboring towns have found that they had to do. Uh, we've been able to continue to provide a level of services to which people have become accustomed, uh, but that is not going to be easy in the course of the next year. We've all seen uh, the local aid cuts and things that are coming down the road. Uh, we also, I think, need to stick to our, our uh, plans to budget for a number of capital improvements over the course of the next year. Uh, given the economic climate, Wilmington's uh, low debt, uh, the low interest rates, and, and competitive bidding environment, uh, this is the right time to spend the money on capital improvement projects that are one-time expenditures that won't be seen in the budget year after year. Uh, finally, on a, on a personal note, uh, very much interested in the next year or year and a half to continue looking for alternatives to increase the field space that we provide uh, to our youth athletic groups. Uh, and those are the kinds of things that have grown by leaps and bounds, uh, soccer, lacrosse, uh, little league, softball. Uh, those kids deserve to continue to enjoy quality field space. We need more of it and we need to continue to explore public and private partnerships to try and make that happen. So uh, I will now end my time. Thank you very much and uh, get on to the important business of hearing from our candidates and uh, from Michaela as well. Thank you, Mike. As uh, Odette mentioned early, uh, earlier, uh, Jim Gillis, representative of the uh, Shawshine Tech School Committee, is, was unable to be with us, but he did send a statement that I'd like to read to you some of his roles and responsibilities. <laughs> Uh, since Ed reform in 1993, the major responsibility of any school committee is to oversee the budget and hire, supervise, and evaluate the superintendent. The Shawshine superintendent reports to the regional committee, of which there are 10 members. Each year, the committee elects a chairman, vice chairman, secretary, and treasurer. Mr. Gillis served as chairman in 2006 and 7, and 2007, 2008. He has one voice and one vote for the town of Wilmington. He chairs the personal subcommittee and was past chairman of the technology subcommittee. His primary role is to ensure that Wilmington students receive a quality education in a safe environment, that the curriculum is up to date, and that our resources of the school utilized appropriately. 
There are two elected members from each community in the district. The district includes Wilmington, Tewksbury, Burlington, Bill Ricker, and Bedford, each member serving three years. Attorney Robert Peterson is Wilmington's other representative. A few points that Mr. Gillis wanted us to make this evening about Shawshank Tech and uh, some of the things that they've accomplished over the past few years. Shawshank Valley Technical High School's assessment to the town of Wilmington has decreased from 3.4 million in fiscal year 06 to 3.2 million for fiscal year 09. Average daily attendance at Shawshank Valley Technical High School has improved each of the past three years, 95.2% of 2005 and 6 school year, 95.5% in 2006-7, and 95.6% for the 2007 and 8 school year. And then for the next three years, he's working to continue not only the success of the past, but outline some additional areas of goals as well to engage in uh, a process to apply for federal stimulus funding to expand program offerings in the life science and health occupation areas and to provide critical budgetary leadership during fiscally challenging times. So I'd like to thank Mr. Gillis, although he couldn't be here this evening, for preparing these statements that we could read to you this evening. The other thing that the moderator is responsible for, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is, is to keep meetings on time and on schedule. So far we're doing okay? Very good. Okay. So we now jump to the second portion of our, uh, our uh, uh, meeting this evening, and that is to hear from the candidates that are seeking your vote uh, to offices of the Board of Selectmen and to the school committee. And they each will have uh, two minutes to uh, give us a quick introduction and uh, tell us a little bit about themselves and why they're seeking their, these offices. So the two candidates for school committee are Mr. Mario Marchese and Mr. Anthony uh, Quincy Vale, and we'll start with Mr. Marchese. Good evening. First of all, I'd just like to thank my family for supporting me in my candidacy for school committee. Second, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and WCTV for giving us this opportunity to speak tonight. Shakespeare once said, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. I've lived in Wilmington for the past 12 years and I've been somewhat active in the community as I've served as a member of the Wilmington Conservation Commission. Recently, we all know our, our country is facing dire fiscal situation. Wilmington has enjoyed many, many great years of, of great management. However, looking forward, uh, excuse me, through my, I, uh, I, I apologize. Throughout the past 12 years I lived in Wilmington, the town has experienced great fis um, fiscal management through a great town manager. We have enjoyed many great years. However, going forward, I feel that the f uh, financial crisis that our, our country is now facing, that Wilmington n is going to need good financial management. I have experience in financial management and also construction, and with the construction of, with I'm sorry. Hello and good evening. Uh, my name is Anthony Quincy Vale, and I'm very proud and pleased to be a candidate uh, for uh, membership on the town school committee. Uh, I would like to uh, very much thank uh, w the Wilmington Cable uh, Television Studios for hosting us and the League of Women Voters for putting us together, as well as the, the town press that's here and the other members that are running. Um, I've been uh, a resident in the town of Wilmington for the last 11 or 12 years, and I've been involved in uh, many different aspects of civic life in that time, uh, never in really as public a role as uh, with the school committee before. I've been uh, much more behind the scenes uh, doing a lot of the, the sort of um, technocratical work. I was on the, uh, the cable television committee for 10 years uh, overseeing the administration of the Comcast television contract and now the Verizon television contract. I, I'm currently a member of the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department's board. Um, so when it comes to the world of uh, telecommunications, energy, uh, policy things relating to t technology, that's where I've been most comfortable and uh, what I've generally engaged in. And uh, my professional background is in um, energy and utility regulation, uh, law, and business. Uh, I had expressed some interest a few years ago to being involved uh, with the school committee that uh, Chairwoman Kane remembered, and when it uh, became uh, kind of obvious that 
there might be uh, uh, an uncontested seat that would be subject to a, a write-in battle, she approached me and said, um, Quincy, some years ago you said you were interested. Would you, would you consider running this year? Uh, we discussed the time commitments and my own time commitments and with the support of my wife and, and kids as well. I have three kids in the school district. Um, I decided to put my hat in the ring, so to speak, and with her assistance and with the assistance of other people, managed to scrounge up the number of signatures necessary for me to get on the ballot at, at just about the last second. Um, but I'm uh, very pleased to be here tonight, and uh, I'll try and respond as well as I can to all the questions that are answered uh, that are asked of me. And um, I'm just honored to uh, participate in this aspect of civic life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marquez. You have some time left if you'd. Uh, yes, like round two. Please. Absolutely. Uh, I apologize, sir. <laughs> momentary freeze there again um, thank you all for, for giving me this opportunity again to speak twice as, as we look forward through through our country we know we have we're going to have some serious financial problems Wilmington has enjoyed many many great years of prosperity however looking forward I feel that my experience in fiscal management and construction will give me the expertise to help the school, Wilmington School Committee looking forward in planning a sound and fiscal budget and helping us build what we need and not what we dream in terms of a new high school and manage our facilities. I have two children in the, in the system and I, I felt compelled to, to get involved in the school committee because things have changed from when I was a child. School is much different. Our, our children now are under a lot more stress now that they're dealing with the MCAS. I see it in my children's face every day when, when they come home and they have more homework than I've ever seen. It's, it's hard for a parent nowadays when, if you're not engaged in the system, to understand what, what our children are going through. So I felt compelled that I need to get more involved to understand the day-to-day -day, day -day activities of my children and see how I can better help them in school and, and to help the town of uh, the, the, excuse me, the community of Wilmington build a better school s system. Not, not that there's anything wrong with it now, but I want to make sure that we look forward into the 21st and to the 22nd century that Wilmington is a very prosperous town and that we are looking forward and not looking be, uh, behind. Thank you. Thank you. And seeking your vote uh, for a three-year term on the Wilmington Board of Selectmen is Mr. Mike Shampoo. Good evening. My name is Mike Shampoo. I am running for Selectman. Uh, I want to thank uh, the uh, League of Women Voters for having us here tonight, uh, for WCTV for sponsoring this, uh, this evening uh, in this beautiful new facility. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I, I've been excited about this opportunity to finally get out and, and, and address the community and allow the community to get to know me better. I feel like I know the community pretty well, but it's a good chance for the community now to get to know me. Um, I've lived in Wilmington for 10 years uh, with my wife, uh, Doreen. We have two young children, uh, Michael and Jackie, who are at the, in, in the Woburn Street School. I've been inv involved in various uh, community activities for years. I'm currently uh, one of the board of directors of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm an officer in the Knights of Columbus here in Wilmington. Uh, I'm actively coaching youth sports, uh, currently soccer. Uh, I just finished with the basketball season and, uh, and baseball. I'm sorry, not soccer, soccer in the fall. Uh, I'm involved in various church and charitable organizations. And I was one of the key members that brought the moving wall to Wilmington in the fall of 2008. Uh, and it was really during that time that I was inspired by the spirit of volunteerism that is evident throughout the town of Wilmington. Uh, and I'm sure those of you that are watching know you see it uh, every year, you see it all around us. Uh, most evident coming up on the 4th of July, you see that committee that goes uh, above and beyond the call of duty. Um, I see it as my role uh, to be part of a team, uh, to collaborate with the team. When I say the team, I mean the rest of the Board of uh, Selectmen, to, uh, to, to consider all avenues and to hopefully make the right choice for the, the greatest good, for the, the, the most benefit to all of the residents of the town. No, uh, no one single group or interest group, but for all people involved. Uh, so again, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to answering the questions and uh, for, getting, uh, for giving you the opportunity to get to know me better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the candidates for their uh, opening comments. We'll jump right into the next phase of our program this evening, and that's questions from the local press and uh, members of the uh, community. I'd like to introduce those folks to you. Uh, right now if I could from the League of Women Voters Ms. Michelle Vlamis from the Wilmington Advocate uh, Mac McIntyre from the Wilmington Town Crier Steve Bjork and uh, a Wilmington High School senior joining us this evening a special welcome to, to Nira Pandia so our first question will come from Mr. B Mr. Bork thank you Mr. Moderator good evening gentlemen good evening. 
Uh, first, uh, my thanks to you for uh, stepping up and serving your community. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, in three years from now, you'll be looking uh, back at your first term, and you'll be looking uh, to run for re-election. At that point, what will you be able to point to as your accomplishments over your first term? We'll start with uh, Mr. Shampoo and work that way on the first question. It's a great question. Uh, I didn't practice that one. Uh, <laughs> Um, sincerely, it's hard to foresee what will transpire over the course of the next three years. I would like to be able to say that I did what I opened up by saying, that I collaborated with the team. I think it's very important that the Board of Selectmen is made up of five individuals, and as such, individuals have different points of view, uh, different opinions, and different ways of articulating those points of view and, and opinions. Uh, I think it's the, one of the most important things that, that uh, a member of that board, and really any board, can do is to uh, to work as, as part, again, of a team, to collaborate with those individuals, to be able to compromise with those individuals, with, with, with his or her colleagues on that board. Um, I hope in three years, when I look uh, towards the past and look what I've uh, accomplished, that I can say that I became an integral part of this entity and that, that I was part of an organization that accomplished the goals that the Board of Selectmen set out to do. Thank you, Mr. Marchese. In three years, I hope to be opening the front doors of a brand new high school here in town. Also, in the next three years, I hope to help the school committee complete its five-year strategic plan and also helping it plan for the next five to ten years for the town of Wilmington. I, I hope to help our, school, um, our schools grow in enrollment, bring new families to town. The better we increase the, um, the school system, the more families want to move to town. So, Mr. Bale? It's a great question, um, and even though I've heard the responses from the other candidates, I still haven't really formulated a good response um, for myself. I would just like to think that uh, as I look back three years from hence uh, on, the, um, on my uh, role as part of the school committee, that I will feel that I have done a good job, really given it my best, that I've asked the questions that I felt that I needed to ask and have answered, and that I made the best decisions that I could. Um, there's a lot of uh, big issues before the committee right now, but they will come and go as they always do, and there will be other big issues coming up that I can't foresee at all a year or two from now or three from now. I just want to be able to look back and feel like I've, I've really given it the uh, attention it deserved, worked with everyone, and made the best decisions that I could. Great. Thank you. Our next question will come from Ms. Vlamis, and Mr. Marchese will respond first. <coughs> I want to thank you all for running for office this year. As Odette mentioned, this is the second year in a row of uncontested elections. Um, what can the town do to encourage more people to run for election as you are doing this year? That's a good question. Being that school committee and board selectmen are positions that are uh, obviously volunteer positions. That's, uh, I think that's a a question that all communities around us and also throughout the Commonwealth are, are facing nowadays. All I can say is that running for public office is it's an exciting time. It's something that I've never done before and I'm looking forward to, to the experience and I'm looking forward to help the community in any way that I can. And all I have to say is to all, all those viewers out there if you're watching, it's, it's not really that hard to put your name on a piece of paper. But standing, sitting here in front of you, it's, it's <laughs> as you can tell, it's, it's quite difficult. However, when I, when I look into my kids' faces and, and they tell me, Dad, you're running for school committee. Wow. Does that mean you're going to be the boss? <laughs> I, I won't tell the teachers what they, what they, what they asked me. But, <laughs> but it's, it was, it's truly phenomenal. Um, it's a great experience. And I encourage every, everyone out there who has the slightest inkling if you want to participate, if you want to get involved, just, just throw your name in the hat because you, you, you don't realize um, what a phenomenal opportunity it is. Okay, Mr. Vail? I'm, I'm tempted to make a quip about how the answer to that question is above my pay grade. Um, <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel that uh, it, it, the engagement with civic life is a problem not only obviously in Wilmington, but uh, it's actually uh, endemic uh, nationwide. And you see that in low voter turnouts in, in, uh, in most elections, uh, especially at, at the town level. And I think folks getting involved in town life uh, and running and putting their name uh, into, the, into contention is, is part of that. 
uh, I do it because I'm very interested in civic life and I'm I think innately curious and I like to be involved and I don't like to have things go on without me um, knowing about it I've always been kind of a news and policy junkie uh, I'm very interested in technology and the way that that impacts uh, all of us um, and the environments in which we all live and my, and my kids are growing up in. Um, so for me, it's been a relatively easy decision to get involved on various committees. Uh, again, this is the first one with, uh, with an election involved, but um, I'm just going to keep uh, doing what I do in all my positions, which is sort of ask the tough questions and uh, educate myself as best I can and uh, try and do a good job um, and be able to uh, look at myself in the mirror every day and know that I'm doing a good job. Thank you. Mr. Shampoo? I, uh, I, someone else had asked me a very similar question, and I appreciate the question. Uh, someone had, had worded it, or, or had used the word concern. Are, are you concerned that we have a, uh, a lack of contested elections this year, and I guess last year uh, as well? And, and certainly, I, I will not use the word concern. I, I'm aware of it, uh, as we all are. Um, but I want to draw out something um, that was just said a moment ago uh, that uh, it's incumbent upon all of us. I, I'm not a uh, policy junkie and haven't been. Um, I've been intrigued and interested in this process and in the, uh, and the goings on of uh, town government. Um, but I, I think it's incumbent upon all of us as residents to be involved at some level. I had talked about volunteerism just a few moments ago. And one of the easiest ways that people can get involved, it doesn't mean you have to run for an office, but come out and vote. Uh, yes, we have three uncontested or, or a number of uncontested elections this year, but it's our responsibility as residents within this community to come out and, and cast a vote at town election uh, next week and come to town meeting uh, on May 2nd. The most important action that one can take as a resident is come to town meeting. We are representative of people who, are, who come from outside of the government uh, establishment to run for office in Wilmington. We are evidence that outsiders can gain access and can win in an election like this. And I think next year and in, 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 in years to come, hopefully we will serve as an example to other outsiders who will throw their name into the ring too. Thank you. Our next question will come from Mr. McIntyre and Mr. Vale will respond. Uh, thank you. Uh, some of you kind of hit on this already in your opening remarks, but I just want to ask you a bit more about uh, the town's finances, or in your case, the school's finances. Um, these are tough times. Everyone's worried about uh, the recession and so on. And so what, I know there's no easy or simple solution. So my question is, what is uh, your approach or your philosophy when dealing with these sort of troubled financial times? Yeah, thank you for that question. M my view is that uh, as someone who hasn't uh, uh, just, I just threw my hat in the ring and I haven't poured over the books of the school and I haven't been uh, involved in sitting on a lot of uh, 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 the, the meetings leading up to this, that uh, for the most part, the school committee and the school district is very ably managed. My view is to sort of trust management and to um, enable them to uh, uh, try and foresee what is coming up uh, fiscally wise and plan accordingly. I know we are in trying um, financial times right now, but there are a number of programs out there that uh, are uh, coming into force to try and ameliorate uh, some of the some of the uh, potential hardships that are coming. I think as a part of the school committee, we just need to uh, have able management in place, ask the right questions, make sure that the contingency plans are there, and that we can adjust accordingly as the as the financial picture changes. Um, I, there's no silver bullets in any of this, and it's just a matter, I think, of of keeping your eye on the ball and your, you know, pen or pencil on the paper and doing the, doing the figures, asking the questions and, uh, and making the best decisions that you can in light of that information. Thank you. Mr. Shampoo? Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the $10 million question, so to speak. Um, the, the issue of budget or of finance for the town of Wilmington um, will be one, is one currently and will be one that we'll have to deal with for uh, a good number of years. Um, I guess I would say my, my philosophy for the town is much like my philosophy for myself and for my family, and it's uh, a fairly conservative one. It's to uh, apply a, a, a modicum of fiscal restraint uh, at a time when, uh, when revenues or the sources of revenues are potentially strained uh, is a time also that the town and uh, the community needs to be much more wary of how those resources are expended. Um, we are, fortunately, 
uh, in a position through good management and uh, uh, through the, uh, the, the effective management of our town manager and the uh, finance committee, we're in a positive position to be able to take advantage of a positive lending uh, scenarios and, and uh, situation, uh, competitive environment for contractors. So we should, as a community, be looking to invest uh, at, at a time that we find ourselves in a positive situation so that we can continue to keep ourselves uh, with a strong budget, but also be wary of the fact that we need to be uh, fiscally conservative with how we spend the money. It's a balance, and we're going to have to look for ways to, to apply that balance going forward. Mr. Marchese? Similar to Mr. Vale, I have not had an opportunity to look at the school committee's budget. However, I do share his concerns as also Mr. Shampoo's concerns. The town of Wilmington has been financially sound for many, many years, and the school committee, the school, excuse me, the school system itself has been quite prosperous. But that is only because of the great relationship between the superintendent and the town manager, and through good fiscal management. However, I agree with Ms. Shampoo that we do have sufficient funds in the town of Wilmington and that we should not be looking to take all that money and, and put into uh, underneath the mattress and say we're not going to spend our money and not invest in the town of Wilmington. W we need to look forward now. Now is the opportunity. Now is our chance. Now is the time to invest in Wilmington and look forward. Now is not the time to hide in the closet and be afraid of what's coming forward. If we, if we take action, if we're aggressive, and if we do and we take the right steps the town of Wilmington will be fi financially sound and that in the entire town not just the board of selectmen or the school committee or, or any other various committee throughout town we all need to do it together as, as a community and if we all have the same understanding the same guiding principles and, and fiscal management for the entire town I, I, I have no doubt the town of Wilmington in 10 to 15 years from now is going to be in, in an even better position Thank you, gentlemen. Our next question comes from uh, Ms. Pandia, and Mr. Shampoo will respond first. Thank you, Honorable Moderator. Um, at this time, I'd like to thank the board for com um, coming out here and aspiring to be such great leaders. It is truly, and it's great to see that, and your effort is truly appreciated on all levels, and it is a source of inspiration for all the growing leaders in our community, especially those in my age group. Definitely. Um, now, we've already touched on this briefly, I believe, but what will be the, more specifically, what will be the progress on updating Wilmington High School or more favorably creating a new one? Uh, well, let me, I, I don't hate to use up valuable time, uh, but I want to make sure that uh, you know how much I'm impressed with you being here. Um, I, I applaud uh, you uh, and, and who you represent. Uh, the youth of Wilmington is well represented in having you here, and I, I, I'm, I'm glad to have this question. Um, I, I want to make sure I understand it, however. So if, if I understand what you're asking is what will or what will uh, my role or what, what do you see the Board of Selectmen's role in communicating the, uh, the, the future of the, the, the high school project construction or new construction or otherwise with the, the community? Right. I mean, we as high school students have been getting the buzz that there's something going on, but we don't know concretely what is going on. And I mean, we have where we sort of don't know if the high school is being updated or if there's a new one being created. So if you could expand on how you would go about doing this. That sure. Yeah, that's um, and there's a lot going on. And I, I'm aware of what I'm aware, I guess. I've gone to a couple of uh, sessions that have been held uh, at, by uh, the town officials. Uh, uh, there was one, I think, in, is, is, um, in the fall. Uh, and I guess the best way of communication out to the community of where we are, what has gone on thus far, and what's going on uh, into the future um, is, is through the press. Uh, and I, I, again, we find I, I would say it's incumbent upon the students uh, to sort of look beyond the buzz uh, and to look to our, our press sources in Wilmington, to look to WCTV. And I, I think we have a great opportunity here uh, to, to challenge uh, WCTV to, uh, to dig in under the, the layers of the onion here with what's going on with regards to the high school project. Um, I, I think there's a lot that, that, is, that is being researched and evaluated for uh, possibilities, uh, whether it be a brand new constructed uh, high school, which is potentially very exciting, or a refurbishment of the existing uh, facility. Uh, again, also a potentially exciting. Uh, and all of these ideas have merit and have proponents and its adversaries. Um, what I believe we need to do, and, and uh, made evidence by the question, is that we need to articulate and communicate all of this that's going on out to the community. 
Um, and I hope the press will take this message tonight and WCTV will take this message tonight and uh, any of the proponents or opponents of uh, either side of the argument uh, take advantage to, uh, to speak their mind in, in public forums as well. Thank you. Mr. Marchese? There's no real big secret about the high school. If anyone just visits the Wilmington Public School System's uh, website, all the information's right there. It's, it's completely accessible to the public. Um, this, uh, the town of Wilmington did a complete assessment of all the schools in Wilmington. And many, many of the schools were built in the, in the 60s and early 70s. And, and the high school itself was actually first constructed in the mid-50s. It's, it's undergone many uh, additions and renovations throughout the years. And the assessment I had a chance to flip through this 500-page booklet. Um, the assessment showed that uh, the high school is, is, is lacking. Um, its class sizes are a little bit too small. Uh, right now, I don't know if the citizens realize that the high school actually has 10 floating teachers. So there's actually not enough uh, classroom space right now for teachers where, where a teacher actually picks up their books and moves to another classroom and then moves throughout the day because there's just, just not enough space in the school. The, the, so in terms of the assessment for the building, right now, it, to renovate the building, we'd probably spend too much money than what the, the facility is actually worth. Um, right now, the, the town of Wilmington put a notice of intent to, to the state. They did receive a response back. The state came and actually visited the school last week. Uh, uh, and, um, and all I know is that we're waiting for a response from the state on and whether or not we fall into the model program to receive funding. So. Mr. Vail. Uh, thank you, and thank you for your interest in what's going to happen with the high school. It, it is a particular uh, concern of mine, and um, it's, it's interesting from my from my perspective because this is a, I'm on the other side of the table. I've been an advocate um, for uh, school construction for many many years. Um, I w worked for a state agency, and I actually developed and implemented and ran what was the state's green uh, schools initiative, um, but. Uh, that wasn't as really as an owner's rep and uh, as the school committee I'm now a representative of the owner which is going to be the uh, town and the populace of of Wilmington so uh, I'm on the other side of the table even though I've been involved in this process for many years it I don't I don't know what the answer is it's a very complicated convoluted process the laws have been changed and continue to change um, in terms of how these how these uh, capital investments are, are um, uh, funded by the state and obviously the state is looking at the contributions it makes to local school construction and how it finances that uh, with the with the uh, state uh, budget deficit spiraling to I don't know two or three billion dollars that has to be closed somehow uh, there's a lot of moving pieces here and also the demographics of the population of the school age population where that's where that's going through so there's piles of studies there's lots of consultants there's architects there's um, various constituencies that have to be addressed and brought in. Um, and that's just uh, an outline of why no one has a straight answer as to will it be a, a new one, a renovation, how long is it going to take, when is the ground going to get broken, and what's going to happen. I think um, we're all pretty much in agreement that something has to happen, but we, no one knows what. Um, I'm very intrigued to be involved in the process and to be on the other side of the table as I started off my comments. And uh, just uh, I think everyone is going to work as hard as they can to make the best decisions they can and get it, get it done in a way that everyone will be happy and proud of. Thank you. And Neera, like Mr. Shampoo, I'd like to tell you how impressed I am that uh, you've taken the time to be here. We saw five months ago uh, in the election of a new president in the United States how important the young vote is. In, uh, in electing our, our officials in this country and in this town as well. And um, thank you for being here, and hopefully there are more young people out there that take an active role in, uh, in government and electing our uh, elected officials. And uh, in appreciation for that, we have time for one more question, so I'd like to ask you to uh, ask another question, if you would. Thank you. Thank you once again, Honorable Moderator. And I've only been called that twice in my career, and <laughs> tonight, so. <laughs> My next question for the board is, actually this question pertains to a project that my government class is currently working on in the school and pretty much we've surveyed the entire student body and also teachers regarding what they think about this problem that we see today. Um, 
Would you be willing to support a student and citizen-led effort to change the lane layout or light configuration of the intersection of Main Street, which is Route 38 and 129, and Church Street, which is Route 68, the biggest, the most used intersection in Wilmington? Um, what do you feel about that, and would you be able to su support such a proposition? Mr. Marchese will respond first. All right, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Main Street and 38 and Church and 38. Sorry, I just want to get the directions correct. But, um, right off the bat, I, I can't necessarily say I can I comment on this issue or, or they have the expertise on this, but in, in terms of uh, what I've experienced in traffic, um, I, I would have to say, yes, I, I would support something, some, some type of change in, in, in the intersections um, just to improve the traffic flow. Um, w w without going too further into it or, or trying to go off in a drift and, and a tangent, um, uh, I, I really, I, I can't comment. I don't have expertise in traffic. Well, so. Mr. Bale? Can I ask the questioner um, what prompts the question? Okay. Sure. <laughs> the reason why I'm asking this question is because we, as we are doing a we have a part of our government course where we have to address a problem that we as students can address and we've chosen to deal with the intersection because it pretty much affects all the citizens in Wilmington driving to and fro and um, what we saw we went there one day and what we saw was there was a big problem with the lane with the lanes and how they're I mean I guess you'd have to see more of the design of it but a lot of people have commented on its inability to function correctly and just it's it's just a proposition would something like that be something you'd be willing to support the high school and their efforts for I'd uh, absolutely support the high school and the students and uh, trying to delve into this issue and I I'd urge the uh, the, the school superintendent to make uh, whatever resources that might be available available to enable a, a, a full in-depth investigation of this there are I think as you as you mentioned uh, a number of, uh, of standards relating to signaling and traffic flow that uh, highway and traffic engineers would uh, would look at in assessing whether um, the current configuration makes sense or not and uh, whether some alternative configuration would make more sense and then there's also a cost-benefit analysis that goes into making any of those changes but um, I have absolutely uh, the utmost respect for people who want to take this on and I think it's a great um, use of, of inquisitive um, uh, and questioning and I'd like to make sure that the school and the school district supports students and anyone who wants to take a position to delve into that and make recommendations. I mean that's exactly the type of civic engagement um, of analysis and of work uh, to improve the whole community that uh, that we should all be behind and support any way we can. Mr. Shampoo? Well, uh, Mr. Vail, as, as far as I'm concerned, I think you hit it right on the head. Uh, yeah, I, so certainly. Um, if, if the question is, would I support uh, an initiative uh, of uh, town government officials and or uh, working together, uh, collaborating with students? Absolutely. You're kidding me? That, that, uh, for that issue or for any number of others, potentially? Um, where you speak of, uh, I think many of us and most of us probably listening have all been stuck in traffic at that light um, and probably for a long time. Uh, it, it's not a fun intersection and uh, yeah, I, I, if there were something that could be done to streamline that, I'd, I'd op I would listen with very open ears. That said, uh, I would also be wary of uh, expenditure of, of money. Uh, we talked about fiscal responsibility a little while ago. Uh, investigating options, uh, being knowledgeable so that one can make correct choices down, down, down the line and into the future, that's important. We should be doing that. And if students can get involved and help us get to, those, uh, get to that end process, I'm, all in, I'm on board. Uh, at, I guess I would stop uh, myself from saying I'm in support of changing the intersection uh, because there's a lot more that needs to be learned, as Mr. Vale said. Um, if there were uh, if there were cost advantages associated with doing it, safety advantages associated with doing it, and doing it meant uh, not a tremendous outlay of cash by the town of Wilmington, then I think it would be worth our, our serious consideration. But certainly, uh, we we owe it to the students uh, to uh, to hear them out and to engage them in the process. 
uh, with this issue or any number that they're willing to take on. I, I, I applaud that. I think it's a wonderful idea. Thank you. While you're looking at that, I live on the Burlington Ave side of that light. So <laughs> if about 729 till 733, you could keep it green going that way, I would appreciate it. Uh, uh, that concludes this portion of the event. And I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for asking me to moderate uh, the candidate portion of this. And I'd like to at this time turn it back to our host, Odette Kent. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And thank you to our press and our high school students and to our candidates. Um, at this time, I would, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Michaela Finn, the second place winner in the sixth to eighth grade division of the League of Women Voters Massachusetts Citizens Education Fund. Take a breath. <laughs> Tenth annual online essay contest. The theme <laughs> for this year's contest was Democracy and Change, the newly elected president. In addition to the second place winner, Wilmington had 18 other students in grades six through eight that were awarded honorable mention in this contest. Our hats go off to Stacy Benoit, Michaela's teacher, and her colleagues at the middle school for the work they do which enables their students to excel in this manner. The question posed to this age group was, what do you feel should be the main concern of the president in his first term in office and why? Michaela, would you? Come up, please, and read us your essay. It's time to get the troops out of Iraq. To measure the cost of war, one could look at the dollar amount. According to OnTheIssues.org, the war, the war in Iraq is costing Americans more than $10 billion a month. With the current recession and the unemployment rate at an all-time high, government needs to explore better use of the funds being used to create a democratic Iraq. Iraq has a surplus of funds totaling $59 billion, according to the Associated Press. And one cannot just measure the cost of war in terms of dollars and cents. The cost of American lives needs to be considered. According to iCasualties.org, the death toll of Americans in Iraq stands at 4,238. These lives cannot be measured in dollars. These families are losing vital caretakers, sons, daughters, fathers, and mothers. Americans are losing educated military personnel as well as civilians. These young people were to be the future of America. In mil as military personnel are deployed, families are left to struggle with fear, loss, and oftentimes financial burdens. Our economy is suffering enough without the continuous stress of the war in Iraq. The money being spent on the war could be better spent on Americans in America. If the money were not being spent on the war in Iraq, President Obama could encourage Congress to spend it on the American people. Providing tax relief during this recession is only one area that has been explored. With the talk of the stimulus package and where cuts should be made, it would be advantageous for government to invest in its own people. Americans need to unite and work for the common good of this country. The war is simply costing Americans too much money and needs to end. Iraq needs to be able to sustain itself. Americans have been in Iraq for too many years. We have trained their military, guided their judicial system, and fought for the good of their country. It's now time for President Obama to have the resources being spent in Iraq and the personnel used to fight this war brought to a halt. Allow the Iraq people to take control of their country. This will preserve American lives and turn America around. The money that Americans are spending in taxes can be used in our own country, while money in Iraq can be used for its people. President Obama needs to get the troops out of Iraq and home on American soil. Allow Americans to work in America and save the cost of humans, human lives as well as the $10 billion a month being spent on this war. 
Thank you. Um, the winners of that um, essay contest were awarded their um, savings bonds and their teachers were um, awarded a grant. Um, and the ceremonies were held at Faneuil Hall. And so the kids, the first and second place winners, all read their essays and they were absolutely stellar. They were really great essays. Um, thank you for coming tonight, Michaela. Thank you, Nira. It's wonderful to have you as part of this forum. You help remind us as to why it's so important. Ah, yeah, I'm having one of those moments. <laughs> Where's the page? You, <clears throat> why it's so important to be an active participant in our democracy. I know that for many adults around town, it just seems too hard to find the time to get involved. When we think about trying to make it to town meeting, because we've got soccer games and who knows what all else going on, or getting out to the polls on election day, or even taking the leap and trying to run for office. We should all try to remember that we're not doing this for ourselves. We're doing it for the next generation of Wilmington residents. They deserve our leadership and our active participation in shaping their world. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, I want to thank our candidates, our panelists, our current elected officials, and our audience for being here tonight. It is said that the world is run by those who show up. Thank you for showing up. And I invite everyone to join the Wilmington chapter of the League of Women Voters to help make a difference in your community. Membership is open to all citizens. You can ignore that women part thing, male or female, who are eligible to vote. As a final reminder, please mark your calendars for Saturday, April 25th for the town election. Polls will be open from 8 to 8. And even though we have uncontested seats, I think um, it's a sign of respect for their willingness to step up and take on the responsibility. So get out there and vote. And please show up on May 2nd for town meeting where the town budget and other important decisions that could affect the quality of life here in Wilmington will be decided. Town meeting starts at 10.30 a.m. in the high school gymnasium. We hope to see you there. Thank you and good night.